There are wealthy women on this planet who will pay charming, handsome men to take them out on five-star dinner dates and keep them company. I know, because I used to be one, and working that job will teach you a hell of a lot about female psychology. So in today's video, I'm going to go over six more insights into female psychology, into female nature from my career as a male escort. You guys really enjoyed the last video I did on this topic, so I decided to do a part two and follow up with some more knowledge for you. So the first insight is that acting like a tight ass, acting like a guy who is broke, will instantly lose you respect from women. This idea of being stingy with your money. And it might sound a bit odd that I would have this you know, insight as a guy who's being literally being paid to be there on the dinner date, and I know she is going to pay for the dinner. She's going to pay for the hotel. She's going to pay for the weekend ski trip, right? That is already understood. However, the key thing I noticed, and this, after a bit of experience, I, I made this mistake early on in my escorting career, and that was never... It's about acting and, and like the kind of guy who is wealthy, acting like the kind of guy who is high net worth, not acting like the kind of guy who is broke, who is stingy with his money, who's a tight ass, right? And this would come down to subtle things like not reacting to the price of things on the menu, not being afraid to order something expensive or something uh, you know, really nice and fancy at a fine dining restaurant if the woman is clearly picking up the tab and she's well to do. Those little things like not reacting to the price of things, acting as though everything is totally normal. It's totally normal to be in this high class five star restaurant. It's totally normal to be in the best hotel in town. It's totally normal to be spoiled like this by a wealthy woman. All these things indicate that you're a man of leisure. You're a man of high net worth. And even though I, it's, it's kind of sounds weird, but even though I'm being paid to be there and she's picking up the tab, you have to still act like that because the opposite of that is extremely unattractive and it instantly loses respect from women. As an example, there was one, uh, one client, she was engaging me for the weekend and during our, our weekend together, she went out shopping and she went, we went shopping for some earrings for her. Now the earrings she bought cost as much as booking me for the entire weekend did. Uh, after I, after I saw that price, I was like, damn, I should have charged her more. But I had to not, re I couldn't have reacted. If I had reacted like that, if I'd reacted like, whoa, wow, those are really expensive, right? What does that communicate? That communicates that I'm a, I'm a not really, a, not objectively a tight ass, but it communicates that I'm a tight ass, at least in her eyes, right? Which is very, very unattractive. So you never want to come across as the guy who's like penny, uh, penny pinching and, and, and counting every single penny and dollar. You want to come across as the guy who is in abundance. The next insight is that discretion is an aphrodisiac. Don't kiss and tell, gentlemen. That is the name of the game. If you're a guy who is discreet, if she knows you are discreet, then she can be as sexual as she wants with you. She can be her slutty self, that she can engage that side of her persona and be totally okay with no one else finding out about all the kinky, dirty, nasty things she likes to do in the bedroom. Because you are discreet. You don't kiss and tell. You don't run around telling everybody, oh, so-and-so and I did this thing, right? Being discreet is actually a large part of why male escorts are hired in the first place. It allows these wealthy women to indulge in sexual fantasies, to indulge in a tryst for a weekend without anyone judging them for it because we keep our mouths shut. It allows her to act slutty without feeling like a slut. And that is the key to why discretion is such an aphrodisiac. The next insight kind of ties into the last one, and that is that if a woman thinks she can get away with cheating, then she will. 
This is why discretion is so important, especially in my old line of work. I had plenty of married women who were clients, and I even had a pregnant woman who had a husband who booked me. Now, this doesn't mean that every woman is going to cheat, but if a woman is inclined to cheat, to start, you know, uh, looking around at other options, if she thinks she can get away with it, she will, she will do it, basically. It's down to how much she thinks she can actually get away with without her partner, husband, boyfriend finding out. Moving along, another really interesting insight that I found from, you know, having clients who were, you know, older, wealthier women, middle-aged wealthy women, like high net worth individuals, you know, multiple six-figure earning CEO types, as well as other women who worked as escorts would hire me when they wanted a night off. All of them, no matter, no matter how beautiful or successful a woman is, they still have an insecurity. They still have that insecurity about their looks, about their femininity, about their body. Every woman has a degree of insecurity around that. No matter how successful, no matter how beautiful she actually is, objectively, no matter how many men fawn over her, she will still have some insecurity about her body. The next insight is one that might not apply to everybody watching uh, this video, but if you have, if you are Googleable in any way, shape, or form, you can guarantee that your date, if you're going out on a date with a woman, forget if you're doing my line of work, it absolutely was the case with my line of work, it doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing, if you're going out on a date with a woman, she knows your name, she is going to Google you. She will absolutely Google you, do her research, find out what she can about you, basically stalk you online before she actually meets up with you. And they do this to, find, to make sure that you're not basically a serial killer. But it's, uh, it's kind of interesting that, because I don't recall having ever Googled a woman prior to meeting up with her on a date. But women will absolutely do this to me. This next insight is something that, that has always blown me away. And it is the epitome of solipsism. It's the epitome of women's solipsistic thinking. And that is that if a woman has slept with you, she assumes that every other woman wants to sleep with you, unless you prove her otherwise. And that's super, super important. But they create this, isn't, it, isn't that the most, like, kind of narcissistic way of looking at the world? Like, oh, if I have taken this person to bed, well then everyone else must want to take this person to bed. It's absolutely not true. And like, not, no matter how handsome you are, like, you're not everyone's cup of tea. You know, this is, this is the case for men and for women. But I always found that super, super interesting that the moment you've slept with one woman, They'll start, if they, if they like you, if they think you're very charming and attractive and that you've rocked the world or whatever, they'll start, you know, throwing out things like, oh, I bet you get all the girls, oh, I bet, you know, every woman swoons like this for you, blah, 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 blah. But the underlying assumption there is that if you can get her, you must be able to get everybody, which every man watching this knows that's absolutely not the case. But because of female nature, because of this solipsistic nature of women, they just naturally project that onto the rest of the world. If you'd like to see more insights into female psychology from my career as a male escort, then I highly suggest you check out part one right here.